Hey, yeah, YouTubers, Tasman here bringing you a quick episode of Fantasy Grounds Unity from the Ground Up. So I had a comment in my, um, at my video, uh, video number four, and then also in video number five, part one, I believe it was, uh, by a person named Stuart Butterworth, and he was asking about he got some modules and such from DMs Guild and was wondering how exactly do you get those into Fantasy Grounds or Fantasy Grounds Unity. It's kind of the same thing um, on how you actually do it. So I'm going to quickly make a video covering that. So uh, first thing you need to know, uh, technically I guess you don't need to know, but if you've changed where your location of your installation files are, so if you go into settings, you can always check there, but the easy way is always to just click this little folder icon, but I'm going to show you the other way just so you know how you can actually change it as well. So um, I have another instance of Fantasy Grounds Unity up that has the settings because it pops up the thing saying add your password and uh, you know the UAC. So if you come into your settings by clicking this, typing in your password to load this, uh, and then go over to the advanced tab, you can see the app directory where the actual installation is, is usually automatically populated. So this is where Fantasy Rounds is actually installed, the executable and stuff like that. Uh, there's also a data directory, and I did mention this I believe in my very first video, but I don't think I was quite clear enough. So this directory that uh, I just called data and stuck inside, the default location for this is in your app data, I think then fantasy grounds, then maybe fantasy grounds data or some funky thing like that. Um, but you can change that and I, I did mention in that video that I like to keep it all together. So I actually, you know, uh, in my D drive here, uh, I created Fantasy Grounds Unity, and then I created this directory, and um, and then went and did the settings so that it would actually use that directory. Um, let's uh, go back. Is it this one? No, it's this one. I just will do that one. That one. So anyway, this is the location. Now, whether you know this information or not is not so relevant because this little icon will automatically go to wherever this data directory is. So I'm going to hit cancel here and I think I should just be able to close that. Okay good, it isn't going to relaunch. So anyway, if you click on this uh, little folder icon, you'll see it actually pulls up the Fantasy Grounds data directory. Um, and like I said, if, if you didn't change anything, the default location will be an app data. The quickest way to get there is if you type a percent symbol, A-P-P-D-A-T-A, -A, percent symbol, you'll be able to see. And I'm not sure if I actually allowed it to create one first. But I believe in here there would be under Smiteworks, or oh, right there, then Fantasy Grounds, and then in here would actually be a directory for your data. So that's that's the default location for it. However, uh, you can change that. And I like to change it just so everything's together. So now that we're in this data directory, there's only a few really important directories that you might really care about. Uh, the cache, you don't need to worry about. Um, campaigns, this is where all your campaigns are. Um, so, for example, I have my streaming one that I was doing last night. I have the tutorial one that I use for this very series. So, these are the campaigns. Now, inside these, you'll also have images. These would be your maps, your images, and things along those lines uh, for your, your campaign. Uh, the modules DB you don't need to worry about. This is automatically generated from things you do. Portraits you also don't need to worry about. This is basically generated by the portraits you import. And I mentioned that you actually set those portrait the portrait information in the global portraits, which is right down here. And then user settings, once again, something else you don't need to work, worry about. This is like your hotkeys at the very bottom, what they do, what's in them, 
and things along that line, other settings. So those are your campaigns. Next we have the docs folder. There's nothing in here. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe user manuals and stuff at some point will go in here. But uh, I haven't ever really seen anything in there. The extensions folder now is an important one. Um, and you just want to stick your ext files. So you'll have these files that end in ext. If you only see, for example, 5e underscore obs underscore widget and there's no extension dot extension, you need to turn that on in, in your windows to say, hey, show me extensions, which is actually kind of a safety feature. And the way you do that is you come up to view, you go to options, and you say change folder and search options. If you go into the view right here, you can come down and you will see this one right here, hide extensions for known file types. If you uncheck, the, uncheck this, it will show extensions of all file types, which is a security thing. I don't know why Windows doesn't default it because you might have a JavaScript that they use an icon that looks like just a text file and you'll run that and you'll actually infect your computer or something like that. Whereas if you actually see the extension, you will see that it's like a, a JS uh, extension and no, that's not a TXT file. So the extensions are how it knows what type of file this is. That's how the computer identifies it. Uh, ignore these ones. These ones do not currently run, so I changed the extension to .zip so it wouldn't try and load those. So basically all you'll have in here is just EXT files and those are your extensions. Um, the next one here is your global images. If you have images that you're going to share between campaigns, you'll want to put them in here. Um, and then you can actually share them between the campaigns. It's kind of the same with the portraits. In fact, we have some pogs that we created in portraits. Um, for the campaign that we're doing our tutorial for. The next one is images and, or modules, sorry, I was looking at images. Uh, this one also has a zip file or two because they do not currently work or they are being updated. So I just changed the extension to remind me that, you know, the Fantasy Ground Serenscape sound links does not work. Once I get it, the updated one, I'll put the mod file in here and delete the zip. Uh, so just like extensions, you'll have files that end in .mod and that means they're modules. So you put those in there. Rule sets, uh, we already went over portraits, but rule sets are all the different rule sets that Fantasy Grounds has. Hold on just one second. Oh, missed. Oh, no, it didn't. It worked. Uh, so anyway, your rule sets are all the different types of role-playing games that it works for. So we have Dungeons & Dragons 2E, Dungeons & Dragons 3.5E, uh, 4, 4E. And you'll actually notice if you go into host a campaign and new, that's what these things are right here is your rule sets. This is how the dice work and, and things along that line, uh, you know, whether it's Numeria, Numenera, uh, there's your 5e. This is just the default regular uh, core RPG that Fantasy Grounds comes with. This is Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2, so on and so forth. So um, that is what your rule set folder is. Next we have tokens. This is kind of the same thing as portraits. Technically I could probably put those. These, these are not technically portraits, but it kind of treats them all the same. To do it more correctly, I probably should put those under, under tokens. Uh, then utilities. Uh, the old version of Fantasy Grounds actually had a converter, I think it was, a character converter. Uh, if we go under data here, under utilities, yeah, character converter. Let's see if there's any docs. Nope, no docs there either. So uh, you had the uh, character converter. It doesn't look like there's any utilities. But if there are little utilities that you might use for this, then it will be um, located here. 
if it actually has any it comes with and the final folder inside is the vault now this is when you buy things from say steam from uh, smiteworks itself uh, from official channels, not not DMs Guild, but official ones, because anytime you load up, uh, I was gonna pull up the settings. So remember how it links to your Paizo account, the the Steam account, and your SmiteWorks account. So anything you buy off of them will automatically be added here. A bunch of them are automatic loading already. Uh, this would be like your. Um, Dungeons and Dragons 5e, uh, what is it called? SDR, uh, which is their free type of stuff. You know, it doesn't count. It doesn't have all the classes, all the races. It has a small selection to get you addicted. Uh, so that's kind of what these are. But also, for example, down here you can see. Um, let's see if I can remember which one it is. So these ones right down here are ones I actually bought from SmiteWorks. And one of these is like the, uh, what is the expansion called? The Essentials Kit, Dragons of Ice Spire Peak. So one of these guys is actually the Dragons of Ice Spire Peak. And then I also bought the three uh, modules that are also in addition to that. Uh, if you wanna see it, I can quickly show you just to, uh, give you a thorough understanding of what's going on here. Uh, let me just shrink this up just a little. All right, so if we go to, for example, SmiteWorks, ugh, can't click on it, D&D, uh, &D, all right, Fantasy Grounds, I mean. If we go into, say, I believe the store, it will say, come on, internet is being really slow today. Maybe it's because everyone's at home. So if I go to the store, for example, and I buy things, so this is where you can also link your, your Paizo and your Steam account. Um, but if we go into the shop here, is there like a My Store? I don't know. I don't know if this will say I actually own them or not. But if we come in here and we say... Uh, well, we'll just scroll down because it'll be right. Actually, no, we want to filter real quick. So if we filter by, say, the game system, Dungeon Dragons 5e 5th edition. That's what I want. Uh, and then do Wizards of the Coast. Why does that actually go below? There we go. Uh, filter by Wizards of the Coast. And then hit Search. We'll see all the official stuff. So these are the ones right here. Um, you can see Divine Contention, Sleeping Dragon's Wake, Storm of the Lord, uh, Storm Lord's Wrath, Wraith, Wrath, Wraith, whatever, and then the D and D Essentials Kit. So sometimes you can actually get an idea, like Five uh, E D D E might be the I don't know. <laughs> anyway, oh, there's probably Storm Lord's Wrath. Wraith, Wrath, whatever. Also, I have the um, Unearthed Arcana module, too. Or, yeah, I guess it's a module. So, modules that you, basically, modules that you purchase from Fantasy Grounds, from Steam, from uh, Paizo, will actually go into the vault. And anytime you load Fantasy Grounds, it'll come in here, and these are what it's checking when it updates. It's seeing if there's any 5e data updates, if there's any Pathfinder, if there's any um, of these custom ones that I've actually bought, uh, and it'll check those. So that should give you an idea of your data uh, folder and what everything is. Now, when you do extensions, let's go and close this, close this. So when you do uh, have extensions, for example, we had the OBS one, right? Um, inside your host campaign you'll notice over here on this side uh, that OBS one is actually called the character widget data exporter so if I wanted to have that load up in my game I would simply click it and now it will actually try and load that up in my game um, some extensions like the 14 point clear font 
don't work because they're not using the fantasy ground fonts anymore so technically I just get rid of that one um, but it doesn't actually cause a crash so these are where you actually load the extensions modules that you copied in or that you down uh, that you purchase from from SmiteWorks and everything those will be found inside fantasy grounds when you go into the library button which is right around this area you'll click on the library button then you'll click on the the window that comes up you'll click on the modules button that's where you load those and we've done that several times in our theme alright so I think this pretty much covers what I wanted to get out hopefully enjoyed um, yeah I'm hope I hope hopefully you enjoyed to learn something new and you understand if you have any questions I'm always more than happy to uh, answer questions just leave your question down in the comments section and uh, I will do what I can to answer it um, and uh, if you did enjoy by the way uh, definitely uh, consider subscribing to my channel uh, follow me on Twitter check out my discord and my other channels and uh, that's about it other than uh, also I always forget click the little notification bell down below um, and you'll be notified anytime that I upload a new video. Sorry about all the ums. I know I've done a whole lot of that in this video, but uh, I was kind of shooting from the hip on this one. Just hurry wanted to get it out. So that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.